Can you imagine a volcano erupting ice or a planet's surface where molten rock sades along with ice? I'm talking about Pluto, the farthest planet from the sun. What's happening there at all? There is something to marvel at. And in the end, I'll tell you about the incredible atmosphere of this planet as the temperature there is just insane. You'll be greatly surprised to learn that such a distant planet was discovered quite a long time ago. In the 1840s, astronomers noticed that Uranus's movement did not coincide with theoretical calculations. This led them to speculate about the existence of another unknown planet. Thanks to the efforts of a French mathematician, Neptune was discovered. But even with its inclusion in the calculations, discrepancies remained, indicating the possibility of a ninth planet. In 1906, at the initiative of Percival Lowell, who founded the observatory of the same name, systematic searches for this mysterious planet X began. Lowell did not live to see the discovery, passing away in 1916, and the initial searches yielded no results. Interestingly, a potential candidate was recorded on photographic plates as early as 1915, but was not identified as a planet. Even in 1919, Pluto appeared several times on the plates at the Mount Wilson Observatory, but remained unrecognized. Why? I'll tell you a little further. After Lowell's death, his observatory became embroiled in lengthy legal disputes with his widow, which diverted them from astronomical research. However, in 1929, work resumed and the task was taken up by young American Clyde Tombo, who had recently joined the observatory team. Tombo enthusiastically took on the task, meticulously photographing the sky and regularly checking the images for changes using a special device called a blink comparator. This method, similar to creating animation from sequential frames, helped him make an important discovery. On February 18, 1930, he noticed an unknown object, which was later declared a new planet and the official announcement was made on March 13th at the Harvard Observatory. But why is the planet not considered a full-fledged one? After its discovery in 1930 and until 2006, Pluto was considered the ninth full-fledged planet of the solar system. But everything changed in 1992 when objects similar in size to Pluto began to be discovered in the Kuiper Belt. This raised questions among scientists. After the discovery of Ares in 2005, an object practically comparable in size to Pluto, the issue became acute. It turns out that Ares then should also be considered the 10th planet. It was necessary to not only reconsider Pluto's status, but also to develop clear criteria for the concept of a planet in general. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union established stricter norms, according to which a planet must have sufficient mass to give itself a spherical shape, orbit the sun, and have a cleared orbit, meaning it must be massive enough to attract or repel other objects in its orbital zone. Pluto does not meet the latter condition due to its location in the Kuiper Belt, where many objects of comparable sizes exist. I'll tell you more about the moons later. As a result, Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet and received the number 134340 in the catalog of minor planets. This decision sparked numerous debates and disapprovals both in the scientific community and among the public, especially in the United States where Pluto was discovered. Some Americans were particularly disappointed, considering that Pluto was the only planet discovered by an American astronomer. The situation with Pluto's status change led to the emergence of the term to Pluto, symbolizing a demotion in status or significance, reflecting the public perception of this decision. But let's move on from history and scientific debates to interesting facts. What's it like on Pluto? The planet's surface is covered not only with water ice, but also with ice is made of frozen gases such as nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide, which, as it orbits and approaches the sun, can melt and form the planet's atmosphere. The average temperature on Pluto is approximately minus 433 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the most noticeable features on Pluto's surface is the Sputnik Planitia, a huge basin over 621 miles long, which accounts for about 5% of the planet's total area. Scientists believe that the basin may have formed as a result of an ancient asteroid impact, which has since transformed. This basin is filled with nitrogen ice and surrounded by mountains of water ice. 
Due to its lower density, pieces of water ice can drift across the basin akin to icebergs. Conventional movements also occur in the nitrogen ice, forming channels where many small dark hills are visible. These are icebergs made of regular water ice moving very slowly, just a few inches per year. It's also interesting to note that Pluto has its own kind of sea made of nitrogen ice with water icebergs floating in it. Water ice on Pluto at such extremely low temperatures becomes very strong, forming mountains up to 3 miles high. Additionally, Pluto boasts a majestic feature known as the Heart of Pluto, stretching across 1,118 times 932 miles. This upland is adorned with icy mountains reaching heights of 2.1 miles, adding uniqueness and mystery to this distant dwarf planet. As you can imagine, studying Pluto is a very challenging task. The reason is one but significant. It's incredible distance from our planet. Add to this Pluto's small size, making it barely visible even in ideal skies. Powerful telescopes are needed to detect it, however, even with them, it's impossible to obtain detailed and high-quality images of its surface. And what about the famous Hubble telescope? Even with its assistance, only some outlines and spots on the surface can be determined, but nothing more. But progress doesn't stand still. The opportunity for more detailed study of Pluto arose only with the launch of the New Horizons spacecraft in 2006, which became the first mission directed to this dwarf planet. An interesting fact is that on board New Horizons was a pinch of Clyde Tombow's ashes, an American astronomer who discovered Pluto in 1930. His daughter decided that her father should go where his heart had been all his life. Touching, isn't it? New Horizons successfully flew past Pluto on July 14, 2015, at a distance of only 7.7 thousand miles, beginning the study of the planet and its moons several months before the closest approach. This historic mission provided the scientific community with the first high-quality images of Pluto's surface and its largest moon, Charon, about which I'll tell you a bit further. like to separately focus on Pluto's orbit as it moves very differently compared to other planets. Its orbit is significantly more elliptical, meaning that the Sun is not located at the center of Pluto's motion, but shifted to the side. This leads to large fluctuations in the distance between Pluto and the Sun. How long is a typical year translated into our earthly measures? Pluto's orbit around the Sun takes almost 248 of our years. Interestingly, at perihelion, the closest point to the Sun in its orbit, Pluto is closer to the Sun than even Neptune, but their orbits do not intersect. Passing by, Pluto remains slightly above Neptune at a respectable distance. Another peculiarity of its orbit is that it's an orbital resonance with Neptune, where for every three orbits of Neptune, there are two orbits of Pluto. This ensures the stability of their orbits, so the minimum distance between the planets always exceeds 17 astronomical units and they do not perturb each other's orbits. It's quite amazing, a slight degree lower or higher and this balance could be disrupted and the planets would collide after some time. How long are days in Pluto? It rotates on its axis in 6.3 days in a direction opposite to most planets similar to Venus. Its axis inclination of 120 degrees leads to extreme seasonal changes. Currently, it's spring in the northeastern hemisphere of Pluto, which began in 1987. Seasonal changes compared to Earth's calculations occur every 62 years, therefore, a quarter of the planet's surface is continuously illuminated by the sun, while the rest is plunged into eternal night. What about its size and mass? Almost immediately after Pluto's discovery, scientists attempted to determine its mass based on its influence on Uranus's and Neptune's orbits. Initially, it was assumed that Pluto weighed as much as six times the Earth. However, over time, this estimate significantly decreased, first to Earth's level and then to Mars' size. The idea of similarity with Mars persisted until the mid-20th century based on the assumption that Mars at Pluto's distance would have a similar brightness. But over time, Pluto's sizes were adjusted. According to data obtained from the New Horizons spacecraft, which I already mentioned to you, Pluto's diameter is only 1,478 miles, making its surface area smaller than that of the former USSR, 
but still larger than that of modern Russia or the USA. Compared to the Moon, Pluto would be almost half its size. Now, you understand why it was classified as a dwarf? But its mass turned out to be interesting, too! Pluto turns out to be lighter than most large satellites of the planets and the solar system. It's six times lighter than the Moon and 480 times lighter than the Earth. <laughs> Nevertheless, among dwarf planets, Pluto stands out. It surpasses Ceres in mass by 14 times and in size by 2.5 times, and it slightly exceeds Ares in size, although it's 25% lighter. Let me tell you about unusual volcanoes, or rather, cryovolcanoes on its surface. Analysis of data obtained by the New Horizons spacecraft revealed a whole region on Pluto filled with cryovolcanoes where relatively recent eruptions occurred. By the way, if you're not familiar with the term, let me clarify. Cryovolcanoes are eruptions from the depths of a celestial body, but with icy materials, streams of water, ammonia or methane. They're often accompanied by gases. The domes of volcanoes detected on Pluto reach a height of 4.35 miles, indicating significant volcanic activity on this planet. These findings were published in the journal Nature Communications and provided new insights into the complexity and dynamics of Pluto's landscape. Researchers discovered a cryovolcanic region about 621 miles long, with few craters indicating its relative youth. This region is characterized by large elevations with rugged slopes. It is believed that the main material on the surface is water ice ejected as a result of cryovolcanic eruptions. Creating such a landscape required numerous eruptions and huge volumes of icy material. The absence of impact craters underscores the youth and activity of this region. This discovery also suggests that Pluto's internal structure either effectively retains heat or its depths are warmer than previously thought, contributing to cryovolcanic activity. Pluto is known to have five moons, among which Charon is the largest and most interesting. It is almost half the size of Pluto, but its mass is about one-eighth of Pluto's mass. This creates a unique situation where the center of mass of the Pluto-Charon system is outside the surface of both bodies, resulting in their mutual rotation around this point rather than Charon's traditional orbit around the planet. The peculiarity of the Pluto-Charon system is that they form a so-called double planet where both bodies revolve around a common center of mass located between them. This is a rather rare astronomical phenomenon, and although Charon is not classified as a separate planet, its size and interaction with Pluto make the system unique. The maximum distance between Charon and the center of Pluto is about 12,177 miles. Interestingly, the rotation of Pluto and Charon is synchronized in such a way that they always face each other with the same side, similar to how the Moon always faces the Earth with one side. This means that Charon is always visible in the sky from one side of Pluto, while it never appears from the other side. Charon's surface is presumed to be rich in water ice, and there is a possibility of cryogazers, eruptions of water vapor, and other substances from beneath the surface, similar to its companion in orbit. As I mentioned, studying Pluto is challenging due to its distance and small size. So, new insights have emerged relatively recently. Before that, scientists simply speculated on how this planet exists. The New Horizons project was able to truly unveil the mystery of Pluto. Interestingly, Pluto differs in high surface contrast, exceeding that of most bodies in the solar system. Its albedo, or ability to reflect light, varies from 10% to 70%, causing changes in brightness during its rotation. The internal structure of Pluto consists of a rocky core surrounded by a mantle of water ice. If there was radioactive decay in the core, it could provide enough energy for the existence of a liquid mantle, suggesting the possibility of a subsurface ocean in the past. Freezing of this ocean could have led to the formation of Pluto's characteristic surface relief with gravens and scarps. Pluto's atmosphere is extremely thin and consists of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide, which can condense on the surface away from the sun and evaporate upon its approach. The interaction of these gases with solar radiation leads to the formation of additional compounds and the creation of haze rising to a height of up to 124 miles above the surface. 
Methane in Pluto's atmosphere plays a role in creating a greenhouse effect, whereby temperatures can increase by 37.4 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit per 0.62 miles in altitude. This makes the atmosphere 104 degrees warmer than the surface, providing more stable temperature conditions without sharp daily fluctuations. Pluto is a very poorly understood planet that still holds many secrets. But I'll try to keep you updated on new discoveries. Subscribe to the channel and see you soon, friends. Thanks for watching.